Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Criminology 101, the Kane Tahada Analysis. Tonight's lecture is titled, The Manufactured Monster. Before we get started on this analysis, if you find that I am talking too fast, feel free to slow the video down. If you miss a certain concept or a term, feel free to rewind the video and I'll meet you wherever you need me to be when you're ready. Lastly, if at the end of this video, you find it to be entertaining, interesting, or plain right educational, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I highly recommend comedy because that gives us a chance to converse and share our opinions and our predictions. With all that being said, I'll go ahead and start the video off by explaining exactly what criminology is. Criminology is a scientific interdisciplinary field that focuses on crime and criminal behavior. It consists of other scientific and non-scientific fields that assist in the understanding or prevention of criminal deviance, such as psychology, sociology, biology, and so much more. To begin to understand crime in itself, we have to start with the criminal, and that is where the majority of the criminological theories lie. See, for hundreds of years, Criminologists and other social scientists have developed scientific theories that attempt to understand what makes a criminal a criminal. Throughout my academic career, I have been able to identify these theories or traits of these theories in the lives of people that I know, but more entertainingly so, in the characters that I love to watch on TV. And that is what brings me here today. Have you ever sat down after a long day with a glass of wine and turned your TV all the way up just for all your problems to go away when you hear. This is a big witch town, yeah. Right? But then, after 10 minutes, you catch yourself yelling at the TV screen and your veins popping up out the side of your neck because for the life of you, you can't begin to understand why Kane thought it would be a good idea to kill Detective Ramirez. See, asking that why, though, brings you one step closer to what it's like watching the power universe from my perspective. However, I don't just ask why. I answer it. And that's why I'm here today, to share my answers with you, with hopes that the next time these characters cross your screen, you not only have a better understanding of who they are, but you can begin to predict where these characters should go based on actual scientific fact. So from this moment forward, I'll be relating criminological theories to the actions and behaviors of the characters in the power universe. My name is Kay Cam, I am a criminologist, and I'm your professor for this evening. Welcome to Criminology 101. Our first lecture is going to center around the feared yet beloved Kane Tejada. For those that don't know, he is one of the main characters in Power Book 2 Ghosts from the Stars Network. Based off of the show so far, we know that his full name is Lorenzo Tejada Jr. aka Kane. He was born on October 17, 1997, making him approximately 25 years old. We know that his parents are Lorenzo, ooh, I I mean Lorenzo and Monet Tejada. He has three siblings, Drew, Diana, and a half older brother named Ezekiel Cross. Now that we have a better understanding of the foundation of Cain, let's go ahead and get straight into this analysis. A quick analysis will show that Cain is quick to act on emotion he is aggressive, obsessive, he doesn't follow rules, and he thrives on being violent. In my own words, I would say that Kane is an emotionally driven individual who has often been left unfulfilled on an intimate social level. He also exhibits high levels of antisocial behavior, negative emotionality, and low levels of constraint. He consistently violates societal norms, and his consistent desire to please or impress his family has led to an imbalance of emotional regulation. The recognition of these character traits have been scientifically studied and associated to some extent with the existence of or increase in criminality. 
So, needless to say, that if a real life came to how they existed, he would be someone that we all should authentically fear. Before applying a theory to a fictional character, it must be said that some facts have to be assumed in order to accurately and thoroughly explain the following theory. With all that being said, please, please, please prepare to take notes because we are going to start with the infamous strain theory. The strain theory was first developed by an American sociologist named Robert K. Merton in 1938. This theory essentially states that crime occurs when there are not enough legitimate opportunities for individuals to achieve the universal goals of a society. The lack of legitimate opportunities then creates strain on these individuals, leaving them without means to properly obtain success. Therefore, they revert to criminal behavior to achieve said goals. However, based on my research, I found that a reformulated version of the strain theory known as the general strain theory, or GST for short, would be the best theory to explain the criminal behavior of Kane. The general strain theory was developed by Robert Agnew in 1992. GST elaborates on Merton's theory by stating that individuals who experience such strain have a higher likelihood of committing crime as a way to alleviate that strain and the emotions connected to it. It is important to note that the GST theory suggests a connection between strain and crime through the presence of negative emotions, which is linked to the likelihood of criminal deviance. So in layman's terms, there are certain individuals who are born not having equal access to achieve social goals, and that inequality then begins to weigh so heavily on them that they either commit crime to become successful, like ghosts, or they commit crime to alleviate the strain and the emotions connected to it, like Uncle Tommy. So now that we have a basic understanding of what strain and general strain theory are, let's dive just a little bit deeper and begin to apply it to Cain. According to Warheim 2005, Agnew states that there are three types of strain that lead to deviance. Failure to achieve positively valued goals, the removal of positively valued stimuli, and the presentation of negative stimuli. For the sake of time, we are going to focus on the second and third types of strain because they often go hand in hand. So as previously stated, the second strain is removal of positive stimuli. And an example of this would be the removal of parental love. What am I you? Huh? Your soul's on your fucking son. For example, when the Tejada family learned that Kane killed Detective Ramirez, Monet decided, in consideration of Kane's other failures, that he is to no longer be a part of their family. Making this decision so bluntly sends a message to him that would lead him to conclude that he is no longer accepted, therefore no longer loved, by not only his mother, but his siblings as well. The actions that Kane took after this incident such as teaming up with GTG, robbing the church, they were all criminogenic responses to the strain that he has experienced with the presumed removal of parental love, aka the removal of positive stimuli. Another example would be the unfortunate yet inevitable rejection that he faced when he tried to help Effie, whom he liked, but was quickly met with the reality of their situation. Effie made it quite clear that she was not interested in a relationship with him and that he was in fact never going to come before her and her actions or lack thereof suggested that she was in fact still in love with the one person that Cain hates the most. See according to my research this interaction with Effie his romantic partner resulted in a loss which again is an example of the loss of positive stimuli thus increasing the strain that Cain feels. At this point, if you are following along, you can probably see why strain categories 2 and 3 go hand in hand, but let's go just a little bit further. The third strain, presentation of negative stimuli, becomes evident when interacting with members of his family. For example, every time he has had an interaction with members of his family, especially after the Detective Ramirez incident, he was constantly and aggressively reminded of his failures. This is evident 
every single time Monet tells Cain that he, quote, always messes things up for this family, or when his siblings suggest that he never really thinks things through. I'm not stupid, Monet. No matter how many times you say that to me. These verbal insults are, in fact, an example of negative stimuli. Another example would be the physical assaults that he has experienced. For instance, when his father Lorenzo had him jumped in prison for accidentally pushing his mother, and when Monet slaps Kane by the river after Zeke's interview. All of these incidents add to the already existing strain that Kane feels. So, quick check in. Can you see now why I titled this lecture The Manufactured Monster? If not, let me go ahead and put two and two together and wrap it up. Based on what we know about general strain theory, the strain that individuals experience often produces negative emotions. In an effort to alleviate the strain and its associated emotions, crime is extremely likely. As the seasons progress, we can see that Cain never truthfully stops trying to do right by his family. He never stops hustling. He never stops driving his range. He consistently wears designer clothes, and yet, the means in which he obtains or sustains these things are by way of criminal deviance. Additionally, his jump from killing rival gang members to killing a cop and threatening a lawyer shows that Kane's criminal activity is not only sporadic, but it is in fact increasing. In conclusion, this analysis shows that Kane's criminality is a result of strain that exists due to his family's responses to his actions. Although his actions may not have been smart or effective, his efforts were always based on his desire to be loved, accepted, appreciated, but more importantly, respected. Unfortunately, Cain has been and continues to be unfulfilled on an intimate social level, which has increased his levels of strain, therefore leading to high levels of negative emotionality, low levels of constraint, and an imbalance of emotional regulation, which are all traits connected to criminality. So, if I were to be asked, as a criminologist, what makes Cain Tejada a criminal to be feared? I would say that the difference between Cain and other characters in the power universe is that it is his interactions with people around him that is unknowingly molding and shaping him into the exact thing that makes him powerful. What they don't know is that they are actually manufacturing a monster. And there's one thing that we all know. When a monster gets big enough, nobody is safe, especially its creator. I got shit to prove to you. But that's who I motherfucking am. Monster.